So before we start setting up the attributes to get our tank to drive around, I'd like to point out that there are many tutorials here at 3dtrainer.com which teach you how to create on-screen controls. So specifically if you were creating a game for an iPad or an iPhone, you might have some buttons or a joystick or a crosshair on your screen that you can use to control your actors. But just to make this tutorial move a little bit faster, instead of setting up on-screen controls and then the relationships between those controls and our actors, we're just going to be using keyboard inputs to control our actors. It makes the tutorial a lot faster, but if you're interested in setting up on-screen controls like buttons and a joystick, just go ahead and watch the other tutorials here at 3D Trainer which explain how to do that. Uh, another thing about setting up the keys as our controls is if you were creating a game for the desktop, you would obviously be using the keyboard to control your actor or the mouse. Uh, so it's also good to know to do it how to do it this way. So we're going to be setting up controls which drive our tank around and as you've already noticed our tank is made up of two pieces. We have the body of the tank and the gun turret of the tank and we need to get these two things to work together. So we could set up a whole bunch of rules for the tank body and a bunch of separate rules for the gun and, and each one of those actors are going to have their own separate rules. But for the drive system we want to set up a system that gets these two actors to work together fairly well. So to do this we're going to set up a few attributes. So we'll click on our attribute tab here and we'll click the plus sign to create a new attribute and the attribute that we're going to create is actually called a text attribute because we're going to be using a text input to control this attribute. So I'll click choose and I'm going to name this forward And then the default, which is this blank area next to the attribute, I'm going to type in the word none. And I'm just going to do this three more times, text attribute, and we'll call this one back. Type in the word none for the default. We'll call this attribute left and then one more text attribute we'll name this one right and then for the default for both of these we'll have none so we've just set up these three attribute or these four attributes which we're going to have keyboard shortcuts or keyboard keys change these attributes now something that I like to do while working inside Game Salad is kind of set up an on-screen display of attributes, a attribute, a live attribute display, uh, I like to call it. Unfortunately, Game Salad doesn't have this, so if anybody from Game Salad is watching this video, please add in during the preview a live attribute display. Um, it means that when I press this play button, I can't see any of those attributes or what they're doing or how they're changing and that can make it a bit of a guessing game to see if you've set things up right. So to kind of create my own on-screen attribute display, what I like to do is create empty actors which display these things. So I'll create four actors and in actor one I'm going to drag the display text and the text that I want to display is not the default hello world. The text I do want to display is if I go into this expression editor, we can go into games and then scroll down and find the attributes we just created. And you see that they're listed right there, forward, back, left, and right. So for this first one, I'm going to click the forward and click the check mark. So now that actor is going to be displaying the text. Actually, I didn't double click it, so let's do that one more time. Double click on forward and then click the check mark and if I change this to something like black we'll see that a bit better and if I drag this actor which I'll just call this forward text into my scene it should display the value of this attribute that we created here this forward attribute so I'll hit preview and you can see it's displaying its value. So if I create some keyboard uh, 
inputs which change this, I should be able to see it update here live and it makes everything much clearer for me. So I'm going to do this with the other ones. So this will be back text left text and right text and we can double click on back text and again just simply drag and drop the display text behavior click on the expression editor click on game and this one will be back, so I'll double click on back and click the check mark. Again, I'll change this to black. And if you don't want to have to kind of change all these attributes every single time, you can actually click on this and copy that. And then if I jump into something like left text, I can click and then paste that in there. I just need to go ahead and change this expression. So I will click remove that expression. Click on game and this will be left. Check mark. And then jump backwards and finish this for the right text. Paste that in. I'll remove this expression and then add in a new expression which is to display this right attribute. So if I drag in back, put that here, left, put that there, and then right and put that there. I've now created a live preview of the four attributes we just created. So again, I'll click preview. And you can see that all of those attributes are set to none. So you'll see in a moment why I did this. So let's create some keyboard options which will change those attributes to different values.